Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. This is the first Sunday of Advent, and we're happy to celebrate this Sunday with you. It is also a time in which we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, and we invite you to get your elements ready, your bread and your juice, so that we can share together later in the service. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come, let us worship our living God. Let us join in our prayer of confession. Oh God, we are steeped in a world of violence. War is one of the first things we learn and we let it work its way into our lives. Your promises of peace sound like impossible dreams and we become accustomed to cruelty. Forgive us, rest our weapons from our hands and show us how beautiful life can be when you forge them into instruments of peace. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the East is from the West, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. From Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let our mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Under nothing earthly minded, for with blessing in his hand. Descended. 
Gospel of Mark, chapter 13. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight or at cock crow or at dawn, or else he might find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Ah, the first Sunday of Advent, the one that is about how we don't know the end of the story of God and God's people. One of my favorite movies is When Harry Met Sally. It's about how deep love can come from friendship with Meg Ryan and Bailey Crystal. I like it because it's a concept that rings true for me. It's also filled with scenes that are memorable in pointing out truths. I quoted it to somebody at coffee hour just a couple of weeks ago. Today, I'm thinking of it because of one of the scenes that stuck with me over the years. It was watching Harry read the last page of the book as he starts the story. Why? Because Harry cannot read and enjoy the book if he doesn't know how it's going to turn out. On some level, I think most of us are a little like Harry. We want to know how things will turn out. We have a desire to know what is coming down the line. We have weather reports so we can predict the weather, polling data so we can anticipate elections, long-term financial planning so we can anticipate a safe and secure retirement. We know none of these sciences of prediction are always right, but they give us a sense of security that we have some clue about the future based on looking at the past in order to try to understand what is coming next. Armageddon, The End of Time, has been the plot line of multiple books and movies, someone's vision of what it looks like when God says enough is enough and finishes the story. It used to be pretty popular to try to predict the end times. There would be days on the calendar that people would point to and say, that's the one. I don't hear it as much nowadays, but maybe I'm not on the social media algorithm where those things live, which I'm happy for, for multiple reasons, not the least of which is because Jesus tells us it is not our job to try to figure it out. Friends, we follow a surprising God. In the past, lots of people predicted the Messiah would come over and over again. They pictured a king, a warrior, a conqueror. No one would have predicted a baby born in a stable. Instead of a conqueror, Jesus was a teacher and a healer who went through the streets, including everybody, encouraging those other people tried to block from his orbit. And even the people who spent years following him didn't predict Easter morning. We follow a God who comes into the world in ways we never anticipate and shows us that justice and love, grace and mercy, forgiveness and hope are all possible when we dwell together in the love of the Holy Spirit. Our job is to keep alert in our belief that ultimately love wins, to hold fast to our hope and pay attention to God's surprises. Our job is to live into the coming of a time of justice and love as best we can in this present moment. This present moment in Pleasantville Presbyterian Church time is almost at the end of a chapter. And none of us knows exactly what comes next. But we do know that if we live into the vision Jesus lifts up to us in the gospel again and again, we will see a new tomorrow. There will be opportunities to be a part of ministry of love. There will be times to be the voice of hope in a too often hopeless world. We will see light. 
that breaks into whatever night tries to surround us, and we will know that what we are seeing is based on the amazing, grace-filled love of God. As we share the Lord's Supper this day, may we share as people who are connected beyond time and space with each other and with God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, who told us to remember him in this meal. Let us keep awake to this present moment and let his spirit live in us again and again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. We are welcome to this table by our Lord Jesus Christ, and we invite you wherever you are to share in this communion meal today. For they shall come from the north and the south, the east and the west, to feast at this table, the great banquet of the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We celebrate the gift of life and give thanks that you are working in the world and you are working in the church throughout the world. We give thanks for the gift of your son, for Jesus. We are filled with gratitude for his love for us, his sacrifice for us. We remember him in this meal, knowing that on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we pray that in this feast, we may be united wherever we are, in communion with all the faithful in heaven and across the earth. We pray for those in need this day those who are hungry, those who need shelter, those who are living in the midst of danger and violence and war. We pray for those who are ill and those who grieve. May we be instruments of your peace and love and hope in all that we do, in all that we are. We pray that we might be nourished through this meal, this foretaste of the great banquet of the kingdom of God. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful as Christ's body, representing Christ and doing God's work in the world. Bind us with Christ and with each other. Let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, the cup of the new covenant, Christ's blood poured out in love of us. These are the gifts of God 
for the people of God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray that we are nurtured and nourished by this meal, that we might be filled with your spirit, that all that we do and all that we are might be instruments of your peace and love. Amen. Now let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.